Hi chemists, welcome back. We are now starting our new unit on gas laws. This is one of my favorite topics to talk about. And I think that there is so much that you can relate to in this unit. And so today we're actually going to review a little bit about kinetic molecular theory. And I'm going to introduce you to gases by giving you some different phenomena to think about. After this video, you should be able to explain the factors that affect gas pressure, describe real world experiences and how they relate to pressure, temperature, and volume, and predict the behavior of a gas by changing one of its variables. To quickly review, kinetic molecular theory makes three major assumptions about the particles in a gas. The first being that the particles will move in a straight line until they collide with other particles or the walls of their container. Remember, it's similar to a random walk. The second assumption is that the motion of the particles is constant and random. And then finally, we assume that there are no attractive or repulsive forces among the particles in a gas. There are four variables that we use to describe a gas. The first one is pressure. Remember, the units of pressure typically are kPa, which is kilopascals, mmHg, which is millimeters of mercury, or atm, which is atmospheres. The second is volume. Typically, the volume of a gas is reported in liters or milliliters. Temperature must always be in Kelvin. You cannot have the um, relationships that we'll see soon um, be accurate if the temperature is not in Kelvin. And then finally, we also have to quantify how much gas we have. So we'll also be looking at the amount of moles. So remember, gas pressure is a measure of collisions of gas particles with the walls of their container and of course with each other. So if we talk about the effect of adding or removing a gas, when the amount of gas in a given volume, so basically the volume isn't changing, we're going to expect the pressure to increase. For example, if you were to double the amount of gas. So you've got two containers. Notice on the right hand side you have a little key that says the gas particle, right, are those little dots. And so you can see the one on the left has less gas particles than the one on the right. So if you notice, on the one on the right, you actually have two times the amount of gas particles if you counted them. So therefore, you're going to have two times the amount of pressure, which I think makes sense, right? More particles, more collisions, therefore more pressure. Again, we mentioned that the more particles you have, the more collisions you're going to have, and that ultimately causes a pressure increase. We say it mathematically that this represents a direct relationship. So if the number of particles will double, then the pressure behaves similarly. Ah, white water rafting. So here's a real world application. So the strength and flexibility of your raft are incredibly important when you go white water rafting. So if you think about it, the raft has to be able to withstand the pressure of the air inside, and there's also force of the rapids below. So if the raft is too inflated, there's too much gas added, and the raft will easily burst. But if there's not enough gas added, then the raft will not stay afloat. So that is why often you have to use a pressure gauge to measure your pressure. Let's now talk about changing volume. So if you change the volume of a gas, like let's say you make the container smaller, and let's pretend that the amount of gas is constant, we're going to expect the pressure to increase. So for example, if you were to decrease the volume of a cylinder by half, maybe something like this, I think it's kind of easy to see that the one on the right will tell you that there's going to be greater pressure, and that's because, right, Pressure is collisions with the walls of the container. The particles are going to be colliding more often. So we would expect if the volume is halved, that means we're going to get two times the pressure. So again, because of that fact, we'll see that particles are closer together, which means more collisions, which really means more pressure. 
This is an example of an indirect relationship where you see that the volume decreases, but the pressure increases. So in this case, we saw that the volume of the container is halved, but the pressure doubles. Ah, soda cans. So when you open a soda can, this is exa an exact example of what we see with changing the volume of the gas that's inside that soda can. So um, usually we open them pretty slowly because if we open them fast, then you're going to expect them to kind of fizz up and spill all over the place. So when you open the cap, the gas is suddenly able to occupy a larger volume, and therefore the pressure inside the can is now decreased. Shaking the beverage, however, though, causes the gas bubbles to mix with the soda, and before some of the gas can kind of settle out, you've got quite a mess. Let's now talk a little bit about changing temperature. So when you change the temperature of a gas, let's say in this case we're talking increases, the particles again have more kinetic energy. And if the particles have more kinetic energy, then we see the pressure increase. So for example, if you were to look at something like this, notice it's the same exact volume because we don't want to change too many variables. So it's the same volume, but we're going to say the one on the left is 298 degrees Kelvin, which is like, usually like around room temp. And then the one on the right is 596 Kelvin. So we would see here that we have two times the temperature on the right. So therefore we're gonna see two times the pressure as a result. And as far as making sense of this, right, we would say that ultimately when you increase temperature, the particles are moving faster. And so therefore they're striking the walls of the container more frequently. And so therefore you're gonna see the pressure increase. We examine this as a direct relationship, right? Again, temperature is increasing and therefore the pressure is increasing. Do you recognize this? This is actually the back of an aerosol can, right? Usually you see these warnings. So like it says, for example, under pressure, flammable, right? So if we look at this, another real world application is incinerating aerosol cans. So we have a gas in a sealed container, right, inside that aerosol can, and it's under an enormous amount of pressure. Now, if you think about it, when you heat it up, right, you're gonna have even more pressure inside. So that's why it says, do not store above a certain temperature, because obviously it could burst from all that pressure. So even those empty aerosol cans still have some gas in them. So they will explode if you throw them into a fire. It's also wise not to store the cans that, so that the contents will freeze because freezing causes the substances inside to expand and ultimately puncture the can. So I hope this video helped you understand some real world applications in the behavior of gases. As always, um, I think that you'll need some practice on this and you can ask your teacher for help. Thank you so much for watching.